process. Again, you're boarding Frontier Airlines Flight 404 with service to Denver. Um, my name is Lacey G. Soldier Turner. I'm a film writer, director, uh, music artist, lyricist, activist, business owner, battle rapper, blogger, um, just so many different things. Um, about me, it's always been my mission and my goal to you know, be successful in life. What my success and what your success may be defined in two different ways, you know, but I've always wanted to leave a legacy, you know, for not just my, my kids or my family, um, just even like a hundred years from now, if we're extinct and, you know, the next generation people come, I want to leave something where they look at my art and be like, wow, man, this guy was a genius. Just the content he put out, creative artistry he put out, uh, at least something. So I always strive for excellence in anything that I do, um, whether it's writing songs, whether it's uh, writing and directing movies, whether it's writing commercials for businesses, um, if I'm on my activist stuff, um, I always try to strive for excellence and be the best that I can be in my craft. with us. He has four short films debuting Sunday morning at the Galleria and a sneak peek at the project called The Louvre. And Henry Davis, you are hereby awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for bringing people together. Even though you might have divergent points of view. Yeah. And even though sometimes you can be a lightning rod. Yes, sir. You still have been able to manage yeah. to introduce us to a man who is doing great work yes, in the city who is uh, moving along the dialogue, yes, sir. but who might disagree yeah. with the way you approach this well, or your ideas, correct? Yes, yes sir, yes sir. Jay Money, first of all, I want to thank you for allowing us to be here. My man Lacey here uh, really needs no introduction. I, he has this film, uh, this new thing. He's on the left, I'm on the right. right. You know, I'm, I'm a pro-Trump and he's a no-Trump. <laughs> but, but that doesn't mean that we can't come together. Right. See, now, how did you guys meet though? A, 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 a friend of mine uh, who's also playing in his movie, her name is uh, Stacy White. Uh -huh. Stacy White, uh, real, real pretty lady, you know, good person to know, uh, introduced me to him. Okay. She just called me up one day and was like, Henry, I'm in this movie and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, yeah, right, let me check it out. And I actually liked it. You know, I don't really like a lot of stuff. Yeah. But And I liked it. I liked how it, it actually portrays what's really going on in the hood. You know, it's kind of like the play that I'm going to be bringing out next year. It really portrays what's really going on in the hood. You get to see the good side and the bad side of it. Tell me a little bit. Now, Lacey, when you, but before that happens, but when you then met uh, Henry, were you like, oh, that's that dude who's on TV and uh, uh, talking about Trump all the time? I'm like, I'm like what? <laughs> I'm like, this guy wants to talk to me? Yeah, yeah right, yeah, right. Yeah, but, yeah. but nonetheless, you came together. Okay, and, and so uh, tell me about The Lou. Tell us about it. Uh, so The Lou is a six part drama series. Um, it takes place. A day after the Darren Wilson verdict, so a day after the riot, and it's uh, you get to go through these eight friends' lives, and you get to see how their life transpire, transpire as they get to try to rebuild. So um, it shows um, the perspective of white people, the police officers, the people from the ghetto, and just just these different perspectives. I try to I took myself out of my belief and wrote from all these different perspectives to try to create dialogue to try to heal the city. Wow, so this is more like a, a novel, really. It's, it, it's kind of, it's a documentary of sorts, but it's the nice. scenarios you create are characters that you have yeah, built. Yeah, that's exactly. My friend right hand man, you can see the flyer. I right hear at the MX Theater at the show, you know what I'm saying? I thank God for, uh, you know, for this opportunity. You know, they premiere my short film right hand man tonight. MX Werenberg Theater, you know. This is just the first step uh, in my quest as a filmmaker. You know, God has been opening doors for me. How, how are they recording? Yeah. Um, Brooke, can you move this way? Yeah. 
So, you know, please watch and find out how it unfolds for him as well as the entire cast and how it happens in the movie. This will be my second film work that I've done with Lacey. He allowed me to be on the first one, which was Right Hand Man, and I was Booster, which was a, a great film, and I really appreciate the opportunity that he gave to me to do that because I love doing acting. Yeah, and um, Lacey, yeah, we, I, we met at Webster University, and pretty much every project that he's come out with has just been genius. Uh, originally, he was a battle rapper, amazing battle rapper, and it's so funny because whenever you see his battle rapping videos and then you know Lacey in real life, you, you can just, that that's enough acting real for you to know that he's an excellent actor, um, and then the minute you see any, any of his films or even hear him explain his ideas, amazing director, amazing writer, all of that. So uh, I was very honored uh, whenever he hit me up about this new project, this uh, six part series, um, because everything he's done in the past has been sort of uh, on a shorter scale and I know that he can just take this six part series and go places. So I'm so honored to be uh, on the cast and so excited to see where this goes. And this, and this guy right here, man, uh, Lacey, the Lacey Turner um, has a great mind, and it's an honor to be working with him again. Actually, his film, The Right Hand Man, was my first film. I can say, yeah, that was my first film, because before that I was just doing theater. So uh, this man right here, when he when he hit me up and was like, hey, I got a project, I want to cast you as one of the main characters. I mean, I got happy. The little person me said, yeah, you know, because I know he was going to come with it because he has a great mind. He's always writing and his, his, his projects it has a meaning, has an underlining meaning. And I can't wait to get started on it. Uh, I think Lacey is a genius in the making. I mean, I, to be honest with you, I think he's a genius already. Uh, I see the vision. Uh, it's, it's very clear. I mean, you can just write a script within <laughs> five to ten minutes and it's, it's dope man and i just think that's a, a gift beyond belief and you know i'm just excited to be here and just be blessed with the opportunity to you know put him on the market man and i just felt like this is a this is a blessing i'm happy man. being able to see this dude right here like like change and evolve is the word i'm looking for over the years I mean, we've been friends for 17 years, dude. That's, that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting old. Yeah, yeah. But uh, to see it him in, in the very 25. early 25. <laughs> <laughs> see it him in the in his early days, man, of us walking around the neighborhood, chatting, shooting the breeze, seeing uh, a lot of change uh, from you know, losing friends uh, to just changing them, seeing him involved with the music and, and the rap and you know, going into battle rap and being highly successful in all of that and then he used you know life kind of put a little wedge between us for a minute but uh when he got back on it was like he, he evolved even more he started to uh, writing and directing and acting and stuff like that and i was like dude that's like right up my alley because that's where i was at that point and then i began to see a lot of his projects and things that he was, he was passionate about, the same level of passion that he had in his music. He just took a look at that passion and put it in the arena of writing, directing, acting, and the, the vision that, that he has and everything he does. At first, I don't even think he knows that I'm about to let it out the back. I was like, dude, G, please don't be one of them who write all about the hood. Everything about the hood. Everything. You can't do that. But, but I already knew, like, from seeing the uh, right hand man and Abitha and a lot of those projects in the room, I'm like, okay, this is cool because he's not one of those kind of writers or directors who people are going to be able to put in a box. He thinks outside the box. And everything is just totally different. How I think people will perceive a lot of his, his projects, a lot of his, uh, his writings and things like that. So I'm just hoping. Uh, Glad to be a part of it. Finally, we were able to <laughs> sync up and get on the same page, yeah. schedule and everything. That's and awesome. I've just been wanting to display and finally prove prove to myself that I really got what I know I have. He's making me cry. Switching to the entertainment tonight set now. John, what are we doing here? 
out here in Hollywood, California. G soldiers loving it. How you doing? My name is Lacey. How you doing? I'm Kiwan. What's going on? Um, we here at a casting call. We're giving people opportunities to be actresses and actors, directors, light man, sound man, whatever you feel like you need to be. Sometimes in our community, we don't even know what we want to be. Um, this is our opportunity to teach people about decision making skills. So we're doing it through film. And uh, we'd like for everybody to come out and get your chance to be an actor. You might see TV. You know, a lot of us watch it, but why don't you try to? We're giving that back to St. Louis. I think we're missing that in our community. And at the same time, we're teaching you what to do and when to do it when circumstances come up on you and see the activity that you deal with every day. From uh, drugs to murder to uh, single parent to pregnancies to the worst nature. Um, so come on out. We're doing um, casting Sunday. Yeah, we're going to 1 to 5 at yeah. Western University. That's what we're about, Mr. Yeah, we already did a uh, uh, cast that they had us a little turnout, so we still want you. If y'all know uh, me, y'all know I wrote and directed uh, some nice short films. They made it to some festivals, so we teaming up to try to give back to the community. Uh, G soldier, G soldier, you you. I'm gonna say bang that. I mean, they got a loss. They, 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 they. Uh, TC said, bang it. Uh, Tom, Vic Shoe said, I like it. Uh, EMP said, bang it. I like it. Track Boy said, I, uh, that's hot. It's not me, but it's hot. All right, and Corey said, see, no, keep doing what you're doing, bro. I love this. I'm, I'm a phone call away. Thanks for utilizing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Solo Dope, if you need a job, inbox me. Uh, Lacey G said, I'm here. Okay. All right, bam, bam, bam. bam. You say, bang that. And look, I want to see the video from that. And then on the ill side of that, here's the sick and twisted part. I would like to hear E40 on that. That's how baby number three going to come in. I'm with it. I'm with it. I tell them folks, hey, man, I'm going for the guns, though. I want to hear E40 on that. And he just come in with the don't save him. That's just the sick, the sick part of my mind right there. Okay, this is what I would like to share about Lacey. He's a genuine guy. He's right on point with his art. He has a passion to create, a passion to share, a passion to send a positive message. He loves to help people whenever I am in need of an actor in need of advice because I myself I I'm into production I can call him up and I could just say hey can you help me out or can you give me some more advice or uh, let me give me your opinion about something and he's so open for that a lot of times uh, I find uh, in production, some people are, you know, may not be as willing to share information, but he's an open book. He's like, whatever I know, I got some great information, then I'm, I'm going to share it with you. And I appreciate that. This guy is about, he's about his his work he's about his drive he's about his music he's about making a mark in this world and that's beautiful and then another thing i love about lacy is he don't talk the talk he does not talk the talk he actually does the work when he says he's going to do a movie he does it when he says he's going to write a book he writes it he is a man of of his word when he has a drive and a passion to make stuff happen he makes it happen I've had the opportunity to work with him in the past and I'm currently working with him on a project and he's so warm he's so reliable he's just just got this kind nature about him and he's just gonna go so far he inspires me 
to keep going. He inspires me to keep fighting for my production. And I, I just admire him. It's like, he's almost like a role model to me. So Lacey, you're a great guy. Lacey, keep doing what you're doing because you've got the folks watching. I'm watching. You inspire me. And I thank you for being you. God bless. That one, that one was good. There you go. Yeah. Well, the idea, the idea. Uh, I'm glad to be part of this program because, uh, well, I am from Ferguson. I am the committee man for the Ferguson Township. So it's, it's close to my heart. And I'm glad to be part of it and show some realistic scenes of how the police department views us and versus the alternate view of how they should see us as as people and, and not ATMs. And I'm glad to be part of the program. Thank you, Liz. But I just want to take a second and say that everything that Lacey does, um, I'm really drawn to for, for the truth of it, even when it's an unfortunate truth. And the conversations you see our family have um, are conversations I've heard people have and that I heartbreakingly still hear people have and defenses that we still see splashed across the media. And so more than ever, this movie, this drama series is important and it's beautiful. And thank you so much for letting me be a part of it. Yeah, we kind of, it's interesting. It's, a, it's really cool because we both, uh, our family, our dynamic through our scenes, um, we kind of, we give that, we give that stereotypical view that I know we've seen and it's, um, it's a painful and hurtful truth, but the thoughts are there and they do remain. And so for us to be able to portray that, just to make sure that we're getting all of the truth, convenient and inconvenient out there, uh, bringing attention to, you know, bringing light to everything that's said behind closed doors, even though most of the time, you know, when you're out in public, these things aren't said. But all of a sudden, when you're comfortable, the truth does come out, so. That's the whole idea. Thank you, Lacey, for letting us be a part of this. Uh, like everybody else said, there's a ton of talent in this room. It has been an absolute honor to work with all these people, and I am so excited to keep it going. Hey, y'all, I'm chilling out here. We at the, you know, we meeting, mingling with alumni, executives in the, the film industry. I'm chilling with my boy, Shay. We out here drinking wine and chilling by the fire. <laughs> So yeah, I like it out here. Is it record? Yeah. So, entertainment tonight. Please, soldier. Thank you. No, but you have no idea. Uh, we have a contract killer as a driver. Just want y'all. <laughs> this is Lacey. About the shit I first seen for the right hand man. Uh, we shooting the scene with Sean and Darion. I mean, I'm sorry, Sean and Boost in the car, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is the right hand man. We're doing the scene where Free and Sean get into a heated argument. Vincent is right here. <laughs> I can't drop my case. That's what I do. I had a long day.
My name is Lacey Turner. I'm the writer and director of this great horror film, Flocka. Um, what made me write this film, like this is my first feature. I was going to uh, write a comedy, which I'm still writing called Food Stamps and Wig Raptors. Uh, that was gonna be my first feature film, but uh, one day I started watching like Freddy Krueger, Jason, you know, Halloween, and then I got inspired to write a horror film. So I was gonna make it a short, but I was like, I want to make this a feature. Uh, so I wrote a story of, uh, about these eight friends. Uh, they come on this vacation, you know, they, they're friends from college or whatever, but they come to this mini mansion and all hell breaks loose, you know, that's all I can say right now. Um, I had a wonderful cast uh, from, I picked people from my cast and call and people that I already and work with, uh, people who I feel can bring my vision to light. Uh, they did a phenomenal job. Uh, I played a character, Flocka, uh, crazy psychopath, insane in the membrane. Uh, I got tired of doing the makeup. The makeup took like an hour and a half every single time. Next time I'm wearing a ski mask. But now, nah, but uh, y'all should come out and see this film. Uh, like I said, I wrote it well. Yeah, if y'all know me, y'all know I got a twist in there somewhere. So see if y'all can find it. But um, like I said, uh, great cast, uh, great crew, uh, great makeup artist. Shout out to Stacey Way. Um, so everybody come to the theaters. We need y'all support in St. Louis. Come see this movie. And I want everybody to dress up in a costume when y'all come out to the theater because it's going to be phenomenal. So block forward. Lacey's a great director. Um, he always stays on task. I really love how he actually embraces the movie too. And he casts himself into the movie. I think that's pretty cool. He plays a great Flocka. So that's really fun. Overall, the script was amazing it's it should definitely be like a worldwide movie i think lacy's gonna be going far just and i love working with them they're very workable people they're they think of things that are out the box that's what i really like about them they're young and they're not afraid to experiment and take things to a higher level i really like that and knowing that they're african americans trying to get their art their work of art out there that really inspires me and I, I just wanted to be part of something that was like that. Shelly King, I play Heather in the movie. Um, Heather is Flocka's mom, so that's that's pretty okay. cool. Heather is um, uh, distraught, upset, angry um, woman because of the things that happened. I can't tell you. If I tell you, then it's no point in seeing it. But anyway, it's, you know, it's, it's a good character. It's different from anything I've ever played before. Um, it was a lot of fun, like just being crazy. And if you want to know how the character is kind of like me, I'm crazy. So it really wasn't a stretch to play the crazy person. <laughs> it wasn't too hard to do. Um, why? How the role came to me? Mm. I don't even remember. I think Lacey contacted me about it um, over Facebook and I said, sure, sounds like fun. And so got on board with it. First horror movie. I mean, that's was exciting. You know, it's like a horror movie. So I wanted to do it. It was a lot of, a lot, a lot of fun, something different. Um, why you should come out and see the movie is because I think it's unlike anything that, that you've seen especially coming out of St. Louis. I mean, support local filmmaking as much as you can, um, but especially this movie. This movie is awesome. It was fun to be a part of it. Um, Lacey is a really good writer, really good director. I liked, the thing I liked about him the most was that he let us develop our own character. He didn't tell us what to do. You know, he didn't say, I want you to do it this way. You know, he wrote it and then let us develop our own character. Um, so that was that was really cool. Okay, so what made me uh, uh, write the story of Flocka, um, a friend of mine, I forgot who told me actually, they was telling me about uh, this crazy drug, my altering drug called Flocka that I never heard of before. So I went and looked it up on the internet and I seen like how this drug had people uh, turn to zombies. So that's what made me wanna uh, base the story around Flocka. So I wanted to take this film back to the true essence of horror filmmaking. You know, like back in the days when I first saw Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, super scared as a kid. My mother should not have let me watch that movie. 
But um, yo, so I wanted to, you know, bring that essence back because there've been a lot of horror films that's been made now, and it just doesn't have that backstory and that true essence of that. So that's what really made me write this film. Uh, Lacey brought the role out to me, uh, uh, reached out to me, and we really went from there. Said I was a uh, looking for a guy to play the part and I'm from there you know I was playing uh some roles in some some films but was able to put it in and um I can can say I love the cast everything's going good uh, can't complain about the film it's a, a great scary movie from St. Louis uh, in this case uh, based in St. Louis what I think about Lazy is he's a great guy uh <laughs> we got a lot of laughs a lot of a lot of laughs in the film Okay, so my name is Stacy White. Um, I do flockless makeup, oh my God. Uh, yeah, I use costume makeup for him and it's uh, atrocious doing this makeup. He hates getting makeup done. Uh, it's, it takes like an hour to uh, do makeup of something about his eyes. He can't stand the makeup around the eyes. Um, so it was very frustrating, but I'm glad we made it through each and every time. I also play Ashley, who is married to Charles. We pull up to a mini mansion. The movie is very exciting, and um, I just can't wait to it come out. Everybody, all the characters are very interesting. Everything was very uh, played out well, and everybody did an awesome job. So I'm very excited, Flocka. I can't wait till it come out. And if you uh, like horror films, you need to come out and see this. It's very, very uh, written well, or, or I should say, uh, Lacey did a wonderful job. And, uh, and all the uh, people who worked on it, the um, cameraman, the production assistant, everybody, and everybody that played a part in it, you guys did a wonderful job. Turn off. So Lacey uh, called me up and was like, hey man, look, would you want to do a film? Oh yeah, let's have a Yeah, no, no, I was, I was getting to that because you see, I was going to say, he was like, he called me up. He called me up the day of and was like, hey man, you want to do a film? I was like, yeah, uh, well, I need you. I'm going to shoot you over the, the script. I need you to read over this part. We're doing the camp scene right now. Uh, I need you there by nine. I was like, okay. So I had to, you know, go ahead and, and read over that script real quick. And um, yeah, we knocked it out that night. Uh, I know, I think it's a really, really well-written script to me. Uh, my name is Ryle Lyles. Um, my character that I play is Dan. Now Dan is kind of a silly guy, kind of like myself. Ferguson. <laughs> So me and him, we kind of get along real good, real good actually, you'd be surprised. I'd be with Dan about two, three times a week, you know what I'm saying? Um, Lacey put me on, he kind of fronted like he was going to pick me up, but then somehow his way, shape, form, and fashion, he called me back. And it was a good thing he did, you know what I'm saying? Because I never, this is my very first movie, so I've never been able to act in front of a camera. I act all the time, but in front of a camera, it's a whole different feel, you know what I'm saying? So. I enjoyed every minute of it. It's a fire movie. My character is so much life, you feel me? So much energy and all the juice I put to the cast members. They they all gravitate to the kid and my yeah, cast right. members, uh, my cast members, uh, this is a pretty cool cast, everybody. I got along with everybody. Nobody wanted to fight me or anything, which is a difference from most films that I've never done in my life. So uh, that was always a plus. And I just feel like, Hopefully I made a real good impression. Hopefully Lacey called me back and I get to do this again because I really had fun doing it. You know what I'm saying? All right, no, no, Lacey, Lacey is good, man. Lacey is a real good actor. He's a uh, very interesting, man. You know what I'm saying? Just in the way he do things and the way he implements characters to do certain things. I mean, I could never do nothing like that a day of my life. You know what I'm saying? Everything I do is off the top of the head. So if any anybody that can write down a script they all right with me. G Soldier, man, y'all know about battle rap. You know who G Soldier is. St. Louis very own. This brother just got another battle. He dropped, uh, just dropped with him and Big Cannon. Him and Big Cannon. I don't know, man. You know what? I think I'm gonna recap that for y'all, man. This brother is a good friend of mine, man. He be talking to me. Uh, 
<laughs> he be talking to me, man, a lot. We text each other. Uh, he be giving me pointers. I be giving him pointers. We talk about a lot of things. Uh, battle rap, life, business, uh, Jesus Christ. Shouts out to him, man. A brother a believer, too, man. A brother believe in the almighty God. It's always good to hear when brothers believe in the almighty God. It shows a sense of honesty in their life that they can uh, 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 acknowledge that there's a higher being over them that they someday is going to give an account for their actions who they know that they are accountable to. That means a lot, you know what I'm saying? When you got brothers that's honest and genuine about that belief. for years so you know what I'm saying I'm just proud to be part of this monumental movement you know what I'm saying no justice no peace hands up don't shoot for real hands up hands up hands up no justice um, being an activist has always been very important to me you know um, I'm just uh, watching the shooting of Alton Sterling and uh, uh, Mike Brown and Trayvon Martin and just recent, recently Jacob Blake you know, the police brutality that continues to plague our society. Um, it, it seems like that they don't get it, you know, and and I've always been very uh, vocal about, you know, any type of injustice, whether it's bullying, whether it's police brutality. So it really means a lot to me to, like, be on the front lines when there's protests and uh, anything out there like that because we really do need to get our voices heard. Um, we, we really do need to let them know that we cannot allow this to go on. So not only do I, not only am I out on the front lines, I try to even put, you know, it in my art, try to, you know, make something creatively for my art, even with, like I have did a drama series called, right, a six part drama series called Right Hand Man, which I'm still, you know, in production after a couple, after a couple years, but I really want to, you know, create dialogue and bring some type of um, understanding to, you know, how we feel, you know, I want, I want the police to understand how we feel, you know what I'm saying, like I said, not all police are bad, but, you know, the ones who are corrupted, uh, the ones who shouldn't wear that badge, I want to show them, like, look, we are human beings, uh, we deserve better than this, I think the whole police force actually needs to, you know, restructure their uh, learning, I guess, how they train their offers or anything, because I, I don't feel n no human life should be taken, you know what I'm saying, and they have a thing where they say they shoot to kill, you know, and I just, I, I don't know, that, that just never sat well with me, for real, so I'm always on the front lines, I'm always trying to, you know, speak my mind, speak up for the people that don't have a voice, because, you know, as doors have begun to open for me, uh, you know, I see a lot of rappers and I see a lot of music artists who uh, try to, you know, steer away. Like, they, they they love to take the money of the oppressed people, but they don't want to speak for the oppressed people. You know, they just shoot at a side or be like, oh, I don't deal with that. Uh, no, nah, you know what I'm saying? Just, uh, you know, try to be on the fence and I'm not one of those people. So, uh, what I, I, like I said, I'm an artist, I'm a film director, but I also stand for something. Stand for something, fall for nothing. So I always want to speak for the oppressed people. So uh, that's why I will continue to be on my activist kick for real. Man, like music to me is like, wow, man, it's like therapy. Like I've been doing music my whole life, you know, since uh as a child just watching my my parents you know my stepdad and my mom uh singing motown or temptations all of that you know music has always been in me and anytime i do a song or anything it's like a, it's like therapy if you're if you're happy or if you're going through some type of emotion and you just once i put that pen to the paper it's just uh it's just an amazing feeling you know what i'm saying and i'm, I'm an artist who really you know, a lot of people care about the beats. I love the beats, but I, I really, really am in tune with the words. I care about the words so much what I write. Um, I I really take that serious and, you know, keep it close to my heart. So anytime I um, do a song, you know, I give it my all. I, I lock myself in my room or 
wherever I'm at and I really try to make myself feel what the song is doing. Like, for instance, like, let's say if it's a depressed song or a song about depression or trying to, you know, get over something, I try to make sure I put my myself in that mind state when I write because I want it to come out organically and naturally. And I feel that's why a lot of people love the music that I do make and love my art because they can see the passion in it. They can feel the emotion that I evoke, um, you know, that my music evokes when I put it out. I am my worst, harshest critic, you know what I'm saying? So I don't put anything out into the world unless I, I feel to me is great, you know what I'm saying? So, so whenever my audience do get it, just know that I really, you know, went, went through it, you know, putting this art out because uh, I want to speak for you know people. Who, it's, it's a lot of people going through stuff. It's it's so much garbage music out here now. You know what I'm saying? Like everywhere you turn, that the real music is getting drowned out now. You know because they want us to be stupid and dumb. I feel, but that's why I try to separate myself from any trend or any artist that's the end now, like they like to call it. Because other than those type of artists who rapping about money and cars and drugs. And all this other type of stuff. It's that person who's being bullied. It's that person who's, you know, going through some struggles and they need that uplifting, you know. So I try to speak for those people, you know. Like I said, there's so much of the other uh, music out there that, you know, we have enough of that. So any, even I always try to lead by example also. You know, anytime I'm on a track featured with somebody, um, I, I be myself on the track and still you know give give people greatness a lot of people come up they be like man you killed that track man that was super super tight and i'll be like and look what i rapped about on it i'll be like i rapped about me you know graduating college being a movie director you know it's all about how you say your stuff how you form formulate your stuff so uh i, I give my all i've always gave my all in my music you know and you know and it's just I like to be true to myself. I would never compromise myself for any dollar amount. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, I stand for something. I fall for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I really, really, really love the music. And I will continue. I don't care if I'm 60 or 70 years old. You know, there's no limit on on you as an artist. You know, you can make music as long as you want to. So I will continue to bless the people with the music that I make, uh, art that I create, because I, I love all my supporters and I will never give them less than, you know what I'm saying? I'm always going to try to give them, you know, a thousand percent, not a hundred percent. I always want to give them a thousand percent, you know, go far beyond expectations. Uh, the films I write and direct are, you know, powerful. I feel I, I feel any film that I do write, whether it's a drama, a comedy, a horror film, or you know, fantasy, I try to leave some type of message in there, you know, that the people can get. Um, I love to control my audience when I'm writing. You know, there's no greater feeling than going to a movie theater and seeing the audience laugh at what they're supposed to laugh at or gasp at gasp with you know like oh my god at what they're supposed to gasp at or um you know cry or you know be happy uh, i love as a writer i love uh doing it because you know you see the vision when you write but you don't know it's you're trying it out so you're like let me see if this is going to work but i also um like i said it's so much even in uh, America, there's so many, I guess, blockbuster films where, you know, it's people dying, cars blowing up and all this type of stuff. So me, I try to really stick to story, you know, like, because I feel we've lost the essence of true storytelling now. You know, so many movies out there now where they don't even give time to do character development. It's just right to killing and, you know, you like, Dad, was I supposed to feel for this character? You know what I'm saying? Like, I call it microwave movie making now, you know? So, I always try to uh, even touch on issues like, for instance, bullying. I, I did a film about uh, bullying um, titled Abita. Um, and, you know, I know that's a big topic, a big subject matter, a big thing that happens in America, whether it's in the schools, uh, the workforce, bullying is a big thing. So I always try to strive for excellence in making 
powerful movies, you know, powerful films. My six part drama series called The Lou, or I have a film called Lens, which uh, makes, uh, you know, uh, the Europeans or white, however you want to call them, look through the lens of our eyes, uh, America's eyes through police brutality. Um, uh, stolen. I have a film called Stolen, which you know you see a you know a white family going through something very traumatic. Um, I, I mean, anything I've done, I always try to, like I said, put messages in and, and make people think, make people aware. Uh, and I think that's what makes me a great uh, film writer and director. Also, you know, because I feel not only the audience members uh people who selected me for festivals i think they see the passion and vision in my storytelling um you know i think they'd be blown away a lot by the storytelling whether it's a two-minute film or whether it's a feature film um i always try to tell a great story you know like, like really film characters in films are really just like pe people you didn't probably met in life and you just put them in a story and you know create them you know what i'm saying so like a lot of my films is people that i've uh met before in life and i just put them in films for instance it's this one person that i met uh african-american and i was so blown away and shocked by what she was saying to me uh like as an african-american I, I i remember this is when mike brown got killed and she was like she was uh supporting the police and she was glad it happened and all this type of stuff and i was like wow i can't believe this is coming from someone that's african-american so i took that character and actually put it in my series you know what i'm saying because uh i, I felt it was going to get a rise and people would really like be like wow you know so in closing and saying that i just wanted to just you know let people know that you know characters and films are people that we already always know for real so but yeah me as a film writer and director it's very important to me to always put out um something that the stand the test of time you know not something that just gonna be like ah, that was good and then move on to the next so anything that i've created uh my fans and my supporters will tell you wow man like he created something powerful um like putting my actors in films and positions where they're going to get notarized, you know, by playing though. So that's me as a film writer and director. So I really care about story uh, more than anything. And that's all I have to say. Um, about me, I'm one of those film directors who like to take chances on people. You know, I know it's a lot of people who, um, you know, like to mess with established actors you know they they like to go for the established actors but uh about me i know a lot of people have dreams in this world and it's hard to reach their dreams sometimes you know they don't know which way to turn they don't have a resume um especially in st louis missouri you know where it's hard you know as far as filmmaking because this is not a a big filmmaking city like uh, Hollywood or you know Atlanta or something like that so um, I try to you know pick people who I feel are passionate or have dreams or go I like to take chances on my actors that I pick you know they're not established actor a lot of them are not established actors so once I get them that chance and that opportunity and see them flourish and see them shine it's like an amazing feeling to me it's worth more than money that's worth more than money to me you know like uh, of course we all want to be financial you know financially stable but just to see the look on my actors faces when um, I, I put their films in the movie theaters and uh, not only are their family and friends coming out but just a lot of my, my supporters audience members uh, you know I done brought out crowds as big as 300 people you know over 300 people and just to see the look on my actors faces uh showing that they accomplished something that they probably didn't think would never happen that is like the greatest feeling in the world to me um you know sometimes it can bite you in the butt you know taking chances on people because you find some people that's not serious about um you know the art or whatever but um i just love like i said i just love giving people opportunities and then i like to see them not only once they leave my films and you know i have a great reputation in my city uh, I like to see, you know, other people, other directors and stuff use the actors that I use. They were like, oh, wow, okay, he was in a Lacey film, so that must mean he's 
he or she is great or something. So seeing like my actors that I, you know, handpick, um, like even flourish and other things, move out to other cities and, you know, just start doing, you know, different things. So that makes me happy as a, not only as a writer and director, but as I guess a casting agent also, you know what I'm saying? Me being a me being a business owner, first off, let me say this: I am now also. I need to add this accolade to my, you know, resume. Now I am now a published author. Uh, yeah, I just put out my book, Abita, is on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, anywhere online where you uh, purchase your books, you can find it. Abita, A B H I T A. Um, also, the audio book is out too, so you can get that. But uh, being a business owner. Uh, entrepreneur is a, a very great thing like I, I I realized that we need people to do the jobs that they're doing because if, if everybody was tr trying to do it we probably wouldn't know it'll be no doctors or anything like that but I feel like everybody should live in their passion you know live in, live in what you are gifted at what you love doing uh, me like I said I love writing so uh, I, I stepped out on faith and was like, I'm tired of working for people. You know, I want to like sometimes you have to uh, make sacrifices and just step out on faith. If you really want to do something in life, you don't ever want to live with the, the, the would have, could have, should us. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to get older and be like, man, I, I should have did this. I could have did this. I would have did this. No, go for what you know right now. Be passionate about what you want to do in life. Um, and that's how I did as a, you know, as a business owner. Um, like I write scripts uh, for commercials. I write scripts for films. Uh, I direct a lot of stuff. I write scripts for music videos, um, and I'm able to live in my by doing that. I'm still able to live in my dream to make music, to make my own films. So, um, if you have a passion and you love doing stuff, trust and believe. The financial, the financial. It's gonna come, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna be financially stable, it's gonna come. So, but one thing about me as a business owner, I, I care about the people, so I don't just do it for money. And that, I think by me not doing it is what allows me to get money, you know what I'm saying? Because anything I do, I care about the I care about the people, you know, like uh, whether it's writing something, whether it's helping somebody out. Uh, people call me all the time like, hey, Lacey, you, you mind helping me with this? And then they be shocked because they feel that I'm on a bigger plateau and they be like, wow, you're going to help little old me? Um, be like, there is no little old you, you know. Um, I'm the same person as you. We are all human beings. You know, you can do the same thing I do. It's all about putting your mind to it and just staying focused and going for what you know, being disciplined in your craft. So uh, being a business owner has been a great thing for me and I'm just going to try to, you know, not try i am going to keep on being successful in it i'm uh, about to branch off into real estate now so that's another thing i want to tackle like i always try to tackle things that i'm interested in so that's my next thing so i really love it but do what you want to do go for your dreams notice audio engineer brandy lawhorn says she couldn't resist the opportunity to work with g soldier when i heard the cd i was like oh man this man is talented like just his cd in general he speaks like a story that has never been told before. I mean, it's been told, but nobody wants to listen. When I'm, even when I'm doing songs, I try to make myself like feel how the song I'm writing feels. Like if I'm writing a song that's um, say about you losing someone, you know what I'm saying, through death or relationship, I try to make myself super depressed. G Soldier said his music is not like other music that is being produced. And if you're still looking for good music, it's still out there. I feel a lot of artists have um, lost their touch, but if you go on the underground circuit, it's still like a lot of passionate artists out there who really take their craft seriously. Y'all killing, killing her in the studio. G Soldier, I know y'all been waiting, so here it go. So long. 
Grab your Forbes issues, don't let that door hit you as you get your roll on. I ain't gon' call you out of your name, that's so wrong. My flow on another dimension, listen, the flow strong. You ex, yeah, you so gone. My ex, yeah, she so gone. The next one came in my life, yep, she leave me so gone. In a different way, the shit is great, she so strong. Type of woman that's loyal, you know we both grown. When you gone, you know I'm missing you. Delicious, all your kisses, red wishes, missing the missus. Your existence got me in the groove. Heaven's what I envision anytime I miss. You, the sin of you was sending it, sending me to a different mood Anxiously wait for you like a fairy for a missing tooth This the proof, this to do everything, it's my mission to Like no other, my mother would never disapprove of you And when we sex and perfection, you give me instant ooze Your complexion's a blessing, resting so deep on my chest And you free from stress and I love your message when texting No testing, that's in the flex and we present Stepping with presence, confessing you are the essence Yes, in my direction, you was visit both and your position is the living proof That's why I wrote you this song for you to listen to Soldier Yeah, and can say to everybody out there all, Even if you're not my supporters If you have a dream If you have a goal If you want to do something in life do it don't let nobody tell you do it don't let nobody steer you from your dreams because we have a lot of people in our life sometimes who like to tell you that you can't do nothing because they're not doing it or like oh that's dumb you're not going to succeed in it those are the people you have to block out you know surround yourself with people smarter than you all so if you're the smartest person in the room out of your camp then that speaks a lot for you you know what i'm saying try to surround yourself with you know positive role model people people who's going to push you people who wants to see you succeed in life you know what i'm saying don't ever stop dreaming don't ever stop your goals Every, any, you can do anything i live by this motto my stepdad gave me this um guy rest his soul now but when i was in high school i was going to state for wrestling and then, you know i was super nervous and i've always lived by this quote he told me to even to this day i'll never forget it he says, if you allow fear and doubt to creep into your mind, then failure is absolute. So if you're already fearing and doubting, then you already fail. You know what I'm saying? And so go for what you know. And there's nothing wrong with failure. You know, failure is a main success. Look at everybody. Tyler Perry, the, the Lee Daniels, the Spike Lees, the LeBron James, Michael Jordan. Everybody, they didn't just come up and be great all of them failed at a point in time in their life all of them so failure helps you out you know you learn from your failures you get strong from your failures i failed before you know what i'm saying um, a couple times you know what i'm saying and i got that that made me stronger it put me back up on my feet and i didn't let it affect me i didn't let it sway me from what i wanted to do and i'm a stronger person because of that so go for what you know um do what you want to do in life don't let anybody stop you salute to everybody who supports me team bars my family my friends i love you all i do this for y'all and i'm just going to keep on striving for excellence thanks to everybody